Happy Tuesday afternoon, everyone. How is everyone doing today? Just hopping on at one o'clock on Tuesday, like I do every week, uh, to do this week's card tutorial. Um, I'm just gonna give it a few seconds to see if anyone comes on and then we'll get started. I hope everyone's doing well. I just got back from my fourth graders classroom for a Halloween party and uh, I'm exhausted. <laughs> I had to come home and have some coffee. I honestly don't know how teachers do it uh, week in and week out. Although I'm assuming that with Halloween it's a little crazier than their normal day. But my kids were very excited. And uh, I don't know about you, but my kids don't have school tomorrow, so they actually get to stay up tonight and uh, not have to stress about, not having us stress about, I should say, uh, getting up early in the morning for school. So that's exciting. Okay, we're going to get going. If you hop on, not that you're going to hear this when you hop on, but when you hop on, uh, just give a little shout out so you know you're here. Um, this card today um, features three colors that I have to admit are a little challenging to put together. Um, we're using pumpkin pie, tangerine tango, and fresh fig. Fresh fig is one of our ink colors um, for the 2017 through 2019. Um, and it's paired with some, you know, uh, autumnal fall colors. And um, I thought they would look really great as leaves. And I had seen um, other demonstrators do similar effects um, and I really liked it and wanted to try it myself. So let's begin. My base card for today is Fresh Fig cardstock. Here it is here. And it's been cut at four and a quarter by 11. And then it's scored at five and a half. Okay, so we're just gonna fold that over and make our card base. Now, um, the back here is um, the hardwood stamp set. Um, I normally am a very uh, devoted <laughs> clear stamp set um, person. However, for ginormous stamps such as this one, it's ginormous, um, I actually prefer the wood mount. Um, it's just sometimes when you're using clear mount it can be hard with a stamp this big it can be hard to get that impression to take in the in the middle here um, so this way using a hard um, mount you just get like a little more oomph behind you oomph yes that's a technical term <laughs> okay so I did just color on color so I'm taking my fresh fig stamp set and my hard wood stamp <laughs> Say that 10 times fast. And with ginormous stamp sets like this, you want to actually stamp upside down. So instead of the ink being down and me stamping, picking up the ink over it, we're gonna do it the other way around. We're gonna leave our stamp set down. And we're gonna go over the stamp set like this. Get it all nice and covered. It is a little bit bigger than our card front here, but you still kind of have to ink it up depending on where you hit your card front. Okay, so I'm actually gonna lay mine flat. Normally I would score afterwards and I think actually that's what I did for my, my card sample here, but I didn't do that for today. Anyways, okay, so here's our card front. We're inked up. I'm gonna flip this baby over and hope for the best. And I'm just gonna kinda get down low. And hopefully, <laughs> hopefully this works. This is the, my card sample. And actually, if you turn it around, you can see um, I used this side first and I actually goofed. I didn't go up high enough with it. Um, so no big deal. You just turn it over and use the other side. Okay. Good. I missed it a little bit down here, but I don't think it really notices. Shows up that bad. We're going to go with it. I went a little high, but it kind of feeds. You can't really tell that much, I don't think. Can you? <laughs> okay, so that's our card base. Next, we're going to do some layering because you know me and layering. Okay. We're going to take um, a Whisper White. 
This is uh, two and three quarters by five and a half. And we're going to mount it on a tangerine tango cardstock, which is two and seven eighths by five and a half. So the same length, just different width. It's gonna go like that. And actually I'm not doing any stamping on the actual Whisper White. All the stamping is gonna be done um, elsewhere and then put on over it. So, actually, you know what? When I do it the same lengths, I like to come from the bottom to make sure I get it flush like that. Like that, okay? And then we're just going to adhere that over our card front like this. Like so. Okay, so we're getting there. Next, to create our leaves, we need, um, I'm gonna put that aside for now. We need a panel, a whisper white panel. This is two and a half by eight and a quarter. So depending on how many leaves or how many um, whatever image you're trying to make, that's how big you need to cut your cardstock to make them, okay? Then we take a sponge, and these are great to give different effects, different hues, different um, depths of color and to also be able to intermingle colors. So we're just gonna cut out like a little pie <laughs> piece of our sponge. Kinda looks like Pac-Man. <laughs> and um, we're gonna use the flat surface of our pie shape, okay? And like I said, we're using pumpkin pie, tangerine tango, and fresh fig. And what I'm going to do is I'm going to sponge the top of our Whisper White First in pumpkin pie, underneath the tangerine tango, and then finally fresh fig. Whoops, whoops, <laughs> there we go. Okay, so we're just gonna pick up some color, like so, and just go over the top of my cardstock. Now obviously, the more you dab, the darker the color you're going to have. And I don't want to show too much white. I want pretty good coverage, so I'm going to go over it a couple times. Okay, and because pumpkin pie and tangerine tango are so similar, I'm going to not even switch sponges. Pick up some tangerine tango and go underneath it. And as you can see, hopefully you can see, can you see that, the different in the colors? Can you, where's my thing? <laughs> there we go. Okay. Um, the Tangerine Tango just has a little bit more red in it. Um, it's kind of like a, well, I don't know if it's like a burnt orange, but there definitely is some red in there. And I'm going to go underneath it, and then afterwards I'm going to go kind of blending my line. First I want to get my, like, streak there. Maybe. Okay, so as I'm stamping this, I just want to remind everyone that my November, in November I am running my thankful campaign. I ran this last year and I had so much fun myself just being challenged to send lots of thank you cards. Okay, so we're done with that. Now we're going to do the same thing with the fresh fig. And to save my sponge, I'm just going to kind of wipe off the color on there and then start picking up. Okay. So in November, I run my thankful campaign. And how this works is for the month of November, um, I want you to send thank you cards. Uh, they don't have to be, um, how do I want to say this? Like, for example, right? This is a thinking of you card. I would definitely send this as a thank you card as well. Think of you on the outside, then open it up and just say maybe to a friend, thinking of you, thanks for being a good friend, you know, whatever. So it doesn't have to be a flat out thank you card, but it definitely has to be something showing appreciation to someone else. Um, so once you send a card, take a picture of either the card or the stamped envelope. I prefer the card because I want to see what you guys are making. But um, just take a picture, post it on the Facebook page here, and for every card that you send in the month of November, you'll get one entry into earning a free 
um, Count My Blessings stamp set, which has been one of my absolute favor of the whole favorite of the whole season. Um, I know not everyone that follows this, um, my Facebook page makes homemade cards. So no pressure. If homemade cards aren't your thing, don't worry about it. Mail a bought store bought card card that's fine just the whole idea is just to send cards let's just be grateful um let's make someone else's day i feel like when we when we show appreciation we really bless someone else especially when they're not um expecting it um i don't know think about yourself like whenever you've like received a card of the mail it just think that just thinking of you or a thank you card you feel pretty special right like someone took the time to think of you so Get sending those thank you cards this month. You have a whole month of November. And really think outside the box. You know, you can send it to the obvious, right? Like spouse and good friends, coworkers maybe. But also think outside the box. Who blesses you that you think could use a thank you for this month? Also, don't forget tomorrow, um, the Stampin' Blends go live, which I'm so excited about. Um, so it's available to customers starting tomorrow. Okay, moving on. So here's my kind of cardstock that I made through stamping. It's a little wet. My fingers are tacky. Okay, I'm going to use the detailed leaf framelit, thinlet, I guess. Oh, look at my fingers. <laughs> I've been stamping. <laughs> um, thinlet. From the seasonal layers, Thinlets dies. It coordinates with the colorful season stamp set. They can be bundled together. They're from the annual catalog. And actually our sentiment for day today come from the uh, colorful season stamp set. We're gonna use that. But the Thinlet is from the seasonal layers, Thinlets dies. And what I'm going to do is just cut out um, four, in this case, leaves. Okay, so let me... <laughs> let's see here I need a bigger space here I'm gonna bring my big shot over and I apologize I'm gonna have to do this four times I normally would do my card magic like like I have before but I really wanted to show you um, how to how to get your paper okay so um, first time the first leaf that I'm gonna punch out I'm gonna put it straight direct you know straight on my cardstock and I'm gonna go that way and then back because there it is so detailed um, I really want to make sure it gets a good cut and actually I'm just realizing I didn't take out my brush here we go I'm gonna use our brush it's got a little like roll around the end of it and I just go over it while I'm holding it it does come with a sponge on the back of it but I honestly don't ever use the sponge I just hold the thinlet until it pops out okay there's one Next, I think I'm going to just angle it ever so slightly. It really is subtle, but it's just to get a, you know, the variation in colors a little differently. That's all. I'm gonna run that through once this way, and then back. Open it up. And punch that out. Super exciting. I am also posting tomorrow my um, December mailed stamp kit. If you are local in the Albany area, I'd love to have you join me at my house for my in-house stamp party. That's November 8th at 12.30 or November 9th at 6.30 at night. Um, but if you aren't able to make the in-house party, um, starting tomorrow, I will have available my December stamp kit. We are going to be using the same uh, stamp set, which is the Christmas Happiness. Yeah, Christmas Happiness. I second guess myself. Christmas Happiness. And it will come um, with four cards in the kit for you to be able to make, along with a detailed instructions on how to make each of the cards. That will go on my blog tomorrow. Okay, last but not least, we're gonna put that one like there. And run him through once that way, then back. Nothing like having your, <laughs> don't you ever feel like you should be a hand model? I feel like I should be a hand model doing these live videos. <laughs> like I need to go get a manicure or something. Okay, so we're done with that. 
And there's our what's left. And I have one. So again, I just hold it and just run my brush. I don't know. I've never used the pad that it comes with. I suppose I should try it one of these days. But honestly, this works and it's faster. I'm not very patient. Okay. And there's our fourth leaf. Now, inevitably, you're going to have some of these little doodahs that are very stubborn. I just use the actual thin lid <laughs> to poke it out. You could sometimes the tip of like your paper snips works just to get those little ones that are stubborn. Um, but I already have the thin lid out, so I figured I might as well just use that. You guys are very patient watching me do this. Is it therapeutic? <laughs> I can't imagine, but okay. One more. Come on, come on. They're cute, right? So you have the pumpkin pie, tangerine tango, and the fresh fig on the bottom. And one more. Okay. Let's clear my mess. Because a clean space is a happy space. Or at least not stressful space. Okay. So here's our card base. Now, normally, I would go wash my hands. Because my hands are, at least my left hand is full of ink on my tips. And I'd be afraid with this whisper right of knacking it. But I'm not going to go wash my hands. We're going to wing it and hope the ink stays on my fingers. So we're going to arrange the leaves um, along my card front here. Mm, let's see. Somehow I've got the other ones higher. Something like that maybe. You know? And I'm just going to use my liquid glue. You know, I packed this thing. Oh boy, don't even. I'm going away on a scrapbooking retreat this weekend. And <laughs> I packed my good glue. And I'm like, I'm sure these will work, one of these. Oh my goodness, come on. Okay, no, no laughing. <laughs> I have one more. Oh, this one feels even emptier. Oh boy, people. Hold on. Hold on. Okay, what I might have to do is use glue dots. I can't get any of these to work. <laughs> Welcome to Facebook Live at its best. Come on. Oops, as that comes off. Oh dear, this is bad, ladies. Or gentlemen. <laughs> oh my goodness. I have three bottles of liquid glue and I can't get any of them to work. Okay. Plan B. This is what we're going to do. I have my glue dots here. And can you see them? You may not be able to see them. They're these little tiny dots. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to use the thickest part of my leaf there and pick up a glue dot. There we go. Okay. It's not ideal because you can still kind of see the glue dot, but I do like the fact that it stays kind of, um, you know, dimensional. I suppose you could have used a mini stamp in dimensional. <laughs> Three bottles of glue, and I didn't have one that worked. Oh boy, oh boy. Yeah, so I'm going away on a scrapbooking retreat this weekend, and I was starting to pack yesterday, and I packed my good one, and I was like, oh, I'm sure one of these will work. Not. Should have tested it first before I went live. <laughs> oh, well. This is how we roll with the punches. Okay, so I'm taking my last leaf. Just So there's my glue dot. All you have to do is just touch it with where you want it to go, and I want it to go right there. And it, it will pull off. Super simple. And, you know, I don't know. How about there? Looks a little different because they're all lifted. Okay, last but not least, we're going to do the sentiment. Um, I did go ahead and stamp it ahead of time. Um, you just need a scrap piece of Tangerine Tango. This one I have here happens to be five by one. Obviously, it's you don't need the five, but 
it's the scrap piece that I already had available. Um, I stamped the little banner here. It's from the number of years stamp set right there. And the framelit that comes with it is from the large numbers framelit dies. So I went ahead and did that. I stamped, oh, you know what I did? Oh, how funny is that? <laughs> I stamped the sentiment in the wrong color, but I mean the banner. Oh, well. Here I stamped the banner in fresh fig ink, and here I stamped it on tangerine tango ink. That's okay. But I do want the actual sentiment in the tangerine, I mean in the fresh fig. So we're going to take my fresh fig ink. And again, we're using the Thinking of You from the Colorful Seasons. And we're going to ink it up and aim for center and straight. Ooh, this is hard to do with the, my phone right where my head is. No pressure. Ooh, I nicked it a little bit. That's okay. Still looks good. I'm going to close that up. Now... I don't know if you can tell, but in my original card, I used two dimensionals because I really wanted a big pop. I didn't want it just to kind of raise up. I really wanted it to raise, raise up. So I put first, put I first I put, can I talk maybe, a dimensional down. And then I put another one on top. I felt it balanced the the height that the ribbon was getting okay and let's see here how about how about there okay now <laughs> i'm gonna use a used fresh fig ribbon i believe it's the sheer ribbon this is it's super tiny um, but I had just enough of it left over for my product share to do this one. Um, so I'm actually using a different fresh fig ribbon. Um, what I did, I just kind of wound it, looped it over itself, and then tied a linen bow, linen thread bow in the middle of it. So we're going to use that instead. Which one do you like more? And uh, especially because this has so much height to it, I definitely wanted to use the double Stampin' Dimensionals. Okay, for this one, I definitely needed the, eh, come on, the, what are these called? Glue dots. Come on. I just cut my nails today. I can't get anything. Not that you needed to know that was that T TMI. Eh. Okay, so I'm using three dimensions, three Three glue dots. Oh, I cannot go into my kid's school before a Facebook Live anymore. That was, I'm all tongue tied. Okay, so that we're going to put, I kind of want it on a little angle. And push that down. Okay. So, same layout, same uh, technique of getting three colors on my leaves, but different ribbon. Gives it a different look. Um, which one do you like more? I don't know. I kind of like this one more, actually. Well, I don't know. I like them both for different reasons, I suppose. Okay, this has been Stamp It Up with Jamie. Thank you for watching and supporting my videos. I will be back next Tuesday at 1 p.m. on my Facebook video, Facebook page, I should say, um, showing you another tutorial. Have a happy Halloween, everyone. Be safe out there. Um... And we'll see you next week. Bye.